So I think I was way too harsh on Apple's new Mac Mini. I did a review absolutely berating the M4 Mini and even the M4 Pro when I compared them to my PCs for Premiere Pro editing. The problem is, Premiere Pro is the least optimized video editor for Mac OS, even after five years of Apple Silicon support. My conclusion was that my four-year-old PC with an RTX 3070 was still editing smoother and exporting faster than the new Mini, and it barely tied with the Pro. But here's what happened. I completely ditched my PCs, returned the M4 Pro, and now I'm running my entire YouTube and app business on just an M4 Mini. That's right, everything on the base model M4 Mini. There are some compromises I want to talk about, so let's dive in. Since that video, I've edited a few videos in Premiere Pro and was satisfied with the editing experience. The big compromise? I definitely need to use proxies for complex multicam timelines. However, basic 4K timeline edits get by fine. I've seen other M4 base users having no issues, but they're all using Final Cut Pro, which is highly optimized for Macs. If you're not stuck on Premiere Pro, you'll have an even better experience editing 4K timelines. But even with proxies, I can handle complex workflows and multicam setups just fine. Initially, I was going to keep my PCs strictly for Premiere Pro and CS2 gaming while using the Mac Mini for productivity and coding. What ended up happening was this tiny base model M4 replaced two massive gaming rigs. Let me explain why. Here's the thing. I work from two different locations, but I don't need a laptop since I'm always docked, which is why I returned the M4 Pro. I needed something portable, but more importantly, I was overwhelmed maintaining three separate workstations. The cognitive load of switching between Windows and Mac, constantly updating software, syncing settings like my custom scripts and keyboard shortcuts, it was a nightmare. Every time I'd work at one station for a week, I'd have to port all my tweaks and updates to the others, which added a ton of friction to starting my day. So I took the trade-off. Slightly slower performance with proxies for one unified setup. And honestly, it's been amazing. Having everything in one place, being able to grab this tiny machine and know everything is exactly where I left it, I can't emphasize enough what a productivity boost this is. My PCs are now purely for gaming and the occasional Windows development. Another major reason why I wanted to move fully to Mac was the much improved developer experience compared to Windows. The Unix-based environment in macOS is far superior to Windows. On Windows, I'd get annoying UAC pop-ups every time I opened a terminal. On Mac, terminal loads instantly with all my familiar bash commands and custom workflows. It's perfect for web development, iOS and Android development, and if you love the terminal, it's unbeatable. Windows PowerShell sucks. One huge thing is using agentic coding tools, specifically Claude code, which work much better on Mac OS. Windows support is hacky at best, even with WSL. Plus, there are premium Mac-only apps like Super Whisper for speech-to-text, Shotter for screenshots, Home Row for keyboard-centric navigation, and Alfred for hotkeys, clipboard history, and custom workflows. Sure, Windows has equivalents, but they're just not as polished. One thing I didn't realize when I unified my setup on the Mac Mini is the power of combining my programming skills with video editing. I can automate so much mundane, routine work by writing these one-off scripts. Even if the code's a bit flawed, it saves me tons of time. I never thought about how the Mac's amazing developer experience would mesh so perfectly with video editing. With the rise of agentic tooling and LLMs, generating Python scripts for your custom workflows is incredibly easy. This has probably been my biggest productivity boost since redefining my setup. Let's switch gears and talk about some of the other pros I've noticed using the Mac Mini. One of my favorite things about the Mac Mini is that I can finally bring my entire computer setup from one office location to another without any pain. I even got this nifty traveling case that keeps it nice and secure. Second, it uses a generic power cable, same as my CPAP machine, so replacements are cheap and easy to find. However, I really do wish it could be powered by USB-C power delivery. Imagine one cable for display, data, and power like you would do for a regular MacBook. Another huge selling point is the M4 Mac Mini base model has extreme value. With education discounts or Apple refurbished, the base model is incredibly cheap and offers the best price to performance ratio. Upgrading gives diminishing returns. I'd rather upgrade every few generations than future-proof for five years. Imagine buying a maxed out M2 Pro Mac Mini for a lot of money, and then a couple years later, the new M4 form factor comes out and the base model blows it out of the water. That would suck, and that could happen in the future again. Another benefit is that the Mac Mini generates way less heat and noise than PCs, saving on electricity and AC costs. Plus, unlike the fanless MacBook Air, it includes a fan for sustained performance under heavy workloads. Think of it this way. You're essentially getting the same base M4 chip performance you'd find in a $1,600 MacBook Pro, but at nearly one-third the cost with the Mac Mini. One feature on the Mac Mini I did not realize I would use so much is the speakers, and here's why. Since I recently broke my ankle, I've had this weird setup where I need to lie down with my leg raised to avoid blood pooling. It's still uncomfortable, but being able to listen to YouTube videos through the built-in speakers has been clutch. Obviously, they're not great for music, but in a pinch, they're not bad at all. My monitor didn't have speakers, so this was a nice surprise. My only wish is that it had a built-in microphone too that would have been perfect. Instead, I'm stuck using this cheap wired lavalier mic to use apps like Super Whisper for voice input. 
Let's talk about the controversial base storage. I'm against upgrading it. The 256 gigabyte base model is plenty. I have Premiere Pro, Xcode, Android Studio, DaVinci Resolve, Chrome, even LLM models, and I'm only at 50% capacity on the internal SSD. I use a 512 gigabyte external SSD for projects and strategically offload what I can. The beauty is that many files can be easily moved without any hacks. Things like the Android SDK, Xcode installations, and project files can be natively relocated to external storage and work seamlessly. Sure, you have a dongle hanging off the back, but that's a small price for the best bang for your buck. Why pay extra just to sell at a discount later? All right, so let's talk about the compromises. With 16 gigabyte of RAM, unfortunately, you cannot have too many applications open all at the same time. If you're planning to build enterprise-grade applications or work in complex code bases, you may want to look into the Pro model with well over 32 gigabytes of RAM. With IntelliJ-based IDEs and Premiere Pro, which are poorly optimized memory hogs, I can't have too many heavy apps open simultaneously. But that's fine, I'm keyboard-centric and don't mind closing apps. People with maxed out machines don't realize they don't need everything open at once. I remember watching one YouTuber who had the M4 Max with 36 gigs of RAM and they wanted to open all the Adobe apps all at once and I'm like, what the heck is wrong with this person? Does your workflow really need that? And she upgraded to the 64 gig model. That's absolutely insane and clearly shows that she doesn't know how to use a computer well. All right, I might sound a little harsh and perhaps a little jealous, but I think some people really don't need to have that many apps all open all at once. Here are some strategies to cope with the lower amount of memory. Try to get in the habit of using Command Q to quit apps quickly and then use apps like Alfred, Raycast, or LeaderKey to bind shortcuts to your most used applications. In fact, with the M4's fast single core performance, apps open instantly, so closing them is not a big deal. This actually enforces single tasking, which makes you more productive. So who's the M4 base model Mac Mini not for? Well, gamers, obviously. If you want to play competitive CS2 or the latest AAA titles, you need a PC. Same goes for game developers or 3D artists rendering complex scenes or data scientists loading massive datasets into memory. This isn't your machine. This also isn't for professional video editors whose full-time job depends on it. Developers building complex enterprise applications with millions of lines of code. It's not for heavy multitaskers who refuse to close apps or anyone who needs true portability. Now, there's all this hype about running local LLMs. I've seen the YouTube benchmarks, I've tried it myself, and honestly, Local LLMs are a complete waste of time. Unless you're doing something illegal or need extreme privacy, they're just not as smart as cloud-based models and they're cumbersome to load. Sure, if you're a sophisticated developer running batch tasks for cost savings, I get it. But even then, the Mac mini can handle basic models and cloud APIs are getting so cheap that I don't see local LLMs as a selling point. This Mac mini powers my entire app and YouTube business. With a good monitor, ergonomic chair, and decent peripherals, you can accomplish incredible things without dealing with multiple setups. I thought I was a pro user, but turns out I'm just a power user who edits once a week and loves to code non-enterprise grade apps. These M4s are so fast, you don't need a pro machine anymore. I was wrong, and now this video sets the record straight on what will be my one and only productivity machine. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, before you go, you know what's painful as a video editor? Spending countless hours cutting out bad takes and dead air from your footage. So I built an app called Video Haircut that literally cuts your talking head footage like you're editing a Google Doc. AI removes all the silences and duplicate takes instantly, free to use and no subscription required, and you can use whatever AI model you want. It's way faster than Premiere's text editing. Link in description.